Good morning, fifth grade. This is Ms. Marks going over your lesson for the first week. You are have an unplugged activity this week. Remember, your code is a little complicated, so I don't want to stress you out, and I don't want to stress your parents out. So it was great timing because this one is an unplugged activity. So this one's called the power of words. Um, students will be able to em empathize with those who have received mean and hurtful messages. Judge what is mean to cross the line from harmless to harmful communications online and generate solutions for dealing with cyberbullying. Um, cyberbullying is the use of technology tools to deliberately upset someone else. So here's a short video. Okay, so there's your video. Unfortunately, this is going to have a lot of talking. You can go back in right now, pause this video, go into your OneNote and complete this page. It's the first page that you have talking about the video itself. If you need to go back and watch the video again, you're more than welcome to. Think about a time when you have been online or texting friends or classmates. Have they always said things that you have liked, or did someone sometimes say something mean? Imagine that you're online and somebody has sent you a message. As you read each message, ask yourself if you feel it's okay, or if it made you feel uncomfortable or upset. Keep a tally marker each time you felt upset. You can keep it on your fingers, probably be the easiest. If you got scratch paper, you can do that too. The first one, you are my friend. Does that make you feel uncomfortable? Then put up a tally mark. You're an idiot. Does that make you feel uncomfortable? If it does, put up a tally mark. And so forth. I'm having a party and you're not invited. I like your new haircut. You are ugly. Thanks for the advice. 
Next time, will you tell me in person rather than through text? Did you finish your homework? Why is it taking so long to finish? You are such a freak. Now count up how many tallies that you had that made you feel bad. Words do hurt. Kids like to chat online and use cell phones to email, chat, watch videos, send messages, play games, and do homework. But sometimes the language can get mean or scary. Messages that make people feel bad across the line. Sometimes that meanness is unintentional. But when people use tools such as the internet and cell phones to deliberately upset someone else or over and over and over again, that's called cyberbullying. Just like regular bullying, if they tell you to stop, you need to stop. Hopefully, you now see how easy it is to feel angry or upset when somebody sends you a mean or scary message online. Cyberbullying is using technology tools such as the internet and cell phones to deliberately upset someone else. Cyberbullies deliberately try to make you feel that way, just like real life bullies try to do. So what can you do? Cool down can be the first good step when you receive a mean online message. Take a deep breath, counting backwards from 10, or pause and think about what you will do next can give you time to think of the best way to handle the situation. Then, finding help or telling a trusted adult or friend can be a good way to take action. Or, of course, you can always ignore the person who's cyberbullying. That can also be effective. Those who bully often like the attention. And that's why they bully. They want the attention and they don't know how to do it any other way. So, they bully. Whatever you do, remember to keep a copy of your communications with the individual who is cyberbullying you. If you delete the communication, there's no proof of how the bully treated you if you need to go to an adult. If you get bullied at school, you know you have other people that have seen it, you have other people that have heard it, there are video cameras, you have documentation that you've been bullied at school. However, if you're being bullied online, if you don't save it, you know the bully's not saving it and the bully's not going to show, oh yes, I, I did this, I did this. They're not going to do that. So you have to save the proof. As hurtful as it is, as bad as it makes you feel, you still need to hold on to it. Okay, now this is to the next page in your OneNote, so you may want to pause the video now to go to your OneNote. Um, create a cartoon about cyberbullying situation. Each frame should tell show a different part of the situation. So in frame one, make a cartoon about something that that a cyberbully might do or write online. Remember to use language that's appropriate for school. Now I know we're online. I know you're gonna see it, I'm gonna see it, and that's really about it. However, still make it appropriate for school because this is a school lesson. Um, you can use your drawing tools in your OneNote. You can draw squares, you can draw stick figures. You know, I'm not the art teacher, I want the content. So that's what I really want to see here. Um, frame two, what might you do if you saw what the cyberbullying has done or written? So what should you do? Even if you just type in some words, I'll take that. I, I know some of us have difficulty maneuvering some things online. Type in the words. Number three, um, what might be a positive outcome or result of the, the situation? How can we turn this around to make this a positive? And then after that, you have a quiz, okay? So there's one question. Number two, last year, I'm gonna tell you the fifth graders did not read the directions. What you need to do is, if it's something you should do, you put the letter A. Let's say letter A is something that you should do. So put letter A here. If B is something you should not do, put it over here, and so on and so forth. So you get all the letters A through F written. Number one is a multiple choice. And what is the meaning of each phrase? Explain it in your own words. What does it mean to step away? What does it mean to tell a trusted adult? What does it mean to okay sites first? And what does it mean to pause and think online? Once you get that done, you're done with your first lesson. When you get it done, I'll be checking my OneNote daily so I can see who's done it yet. 
if you haven't finished, I won't grade it or anything like that. I won't leave any comments, but I can leave comments. I can grade it all in OneNote and you'll get the feedback pretty quickly. It just depends on, you know, how quickly you get it done. And I know you've got other specials and other work to do as well. So if it takes you two days to do this lesson, then it takes two days to do this lesson. Depends on how much screen time you have and what's going on. If you have questions, if you have difficulty getting to things, um, all the special area teachers sent our phone numbers in our welcome letters and in office hours. Ask a parent, call me, let me walk you through it. Let me figure out where you are. Remember, I can always see what you're doing because I can go into your OneNote. I can go into your um, code.org. And this is a code.org lesson, okay? Um, I can go into the different places and find out where you are, what you've done, where you're going. So let me see it. If you need help, let me know, and I will help you. Okay, let's see how week one goes. Talk to you later.